Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. So today is a little bit of a special video for me. I put a post out on YouTube as well as Facebook asking you all if you had any questions for me. And you all blew me away. I so appreciate your love and support for my channel and me and my family. Jason and I were joking around when I was posting the, um, the call for questions and saying that I was probably going to get three questions and one of them was going to be from my mom. So I really appreciate you guys sending in your questions and again, supporting me. I think you guys are all so wonderful and I just want to thank you so much. So Today, I'm just gonna be answering uh, some questions. I picked about 10 of them, and a lot of the ones I picked were questions that were kind of repeated. I had kind of a lot of the same vein of questions, so if I didn't pick your question, um, I tried to get ones that covered a lot of the questions that people have. So hopefully you guys enjoy this, and thank you again. All right, so the first question is actually from Facebook. It is from Kelsey, and when I grabbed this, I didn't grab her whole question, but I think I got the most, the gist of it. So Kelsey says, and this cracked me up when I was reading this, Kelsey. I'm curious what your job is. My husband and I were having fun trying to guess what you do besides YouTube. I told him I can picture you in scrubs or something like a nurse, and my, hu my hubby guessed a school teacher. And then Debbie and Terry both responded and said, good question. I also see Janie working in the healthcare field. And you all are too funny and you all are right. I must give off healthcare vibes or something like that. Or maybe you saw me in my scrub sometime or something. Um, but I am actually in the healthcare field. Actually, both Jason and I are physical therapists and we are specialized physical therapists. We are what you call home health physical therapists, where we actually go into patients' homes that are too weak or too sick to get out of the home and go to the clinic or to the doctor's office. So we often see patients that are very uh, medically impaired, I would say, or we also see patients that have just had surgery, like knee surgery, hip or back surgery. Um, so it's pretty funny that you all caught that. Uh, I do have to say that my job, I think that it's really helped me out um, with this whole YouTube thing because I chit chat a ton in my job. I go to patients' homes and while we're walking or while we're doing exercises, I can just chit chat with them. And one of my most favorite things to do with patients is get them you know, in their gardens, in their backyard, out into nature. And I think that that is definitely something that sparked my interest in gardening because I got to go to everybody's home and see their gardens. So I basically got to go to a couple garden tours every single day at work. <laughs> so thank you, thank you, Kelsey, so much for that question. I really appreciate it. All right, so next question is from Jordan. And Jordan says, I'm curious how you got your start gardening. I just recently caught the gardening bug and I'm so glad I found you. And I have to say, Jordan, I'm so excited for you that you caught the gardening bug. I think that it will be life-changing for you and I'm so excited for you and your journey. So to talk a little bit about my journey gardening, um, I actually have only been seriously gardening since 2020, the beginning of 2020. So we live in Davis, California, which um, is in Northern California, and Jason and I, for work, like I was saying, we're both physical therapists. For a long time, we did what was called traveling physical therapy, where we would spend three to six months at different places around the country um, working and kind of covering for shifts or shortages or anything like that. So we really didn't have a home base for quite a number of years. Um, then I got pregnant and we decided to settle down and so we decided to settle down here in Davis uh, which is a lovely town and a perfect town for raising children and uh, but we couldn't afford anything <laughs> you know it's California it's California real estate so we rented for quite a long time and when we're re we were renting um, you know we had gardeners that would come out and do the mow and blow and I just didn't pay any attention to it but what I did pay attention to is uh, making my home, making the interior of our house a uh, more warm and welcoming space. And to me, that included houseplants. So that is actually how I got started gardening is I got started with houseplants. And I, you know, I bought my first houseplant and I didn't kill it. And, and it just kind of went crazy from there. So in 2020, January of 2020, 
we uh, closed on this house and we bought this house and I had already been going crazy with house plants at our rental homes. And so when I had this garden, I kind of just I just let it all out. <laughs> Jason and I always talk about how um, I never really had a hobby. Uh, he has like a million and one hobbies and he gets obsessed with everything he does. Um, he's really passionate, passionate about all his hobbies and I really didn't have anything like that. So when we moved here and I started finding myself spending all my free time outside in the garden, I finally realized gardening was my hobby. And as soon as that realization hit, it, you know, it just blew up from there and I couldn't get enough of the information. I watched hours of YouTube. I read all the books from the library. I, um, you know, I looked up everything on the blogs. I, I was just trying to take in as much information as I could and I enjoyed every minute of it. I loved it so much. So, um, that was early in 2020. And then of course the pandemic hit and working in healthcare and working in the field that we worked in, um, it was, it was a very, very stressful time for us. So, um, we were actually required to see patients in their homes, even if they had, um, a, a positive case or not, you know? Uh, so we, every day for work, we were decked out in all the PPE, you know, the gown and the gloves and the mask, the N95 mask and the and the face shield. And, um, you know, we're, we were having meetings every day about the incidents in our area and it just became overwhelming for me. It was just too much for me. Um, I do have, I do suffer from anxiety. And so it, it got to a breaking point where I couldn't look at the news anymore. I couldn't even watch, um, YouTube anymore. You know, I just had to get some peace and quiet. So when all of that kind of blew up, I started spending more and more time outdoors in, you know, just in the quiet garden. And I didn't have music on. I didn't have any radio on. It was just me and it was my garden and it was life changing. And I really, truly think it's what allowed me to come through the whole pandemic experience in the healthcare field. Um, you know, okay with, uh, you know, having anxiety and, and seeing COVID patients and um, possibly having to go to the hospital to cover shortages there. Um, you know, it was just, it was, it was absolutely saving my life, being able to come home from work and immediately go out into the garden and just spend my time there. So from that, from the pandemic, you know, this was a pandemic hobby slash possible career change. And, you know, I, and I just, it just kind of went from there and I just learned to love it. And I, like I said, I got all the, I, I just took in all the information I could find and yeah, and here I am today. So Jordan, that is how I got started with gardening. You know, I had done the house plants before then, and then really it was from 2020 and beyond that I really went crazy here. So I'm relatively new with gardening. You know, I always say that I'm an amateur. I'm not a professional. I'm just having so much fun with it. And, um, and I like sharing that with you guys on my YouTube channel. So Jordan, thank you for the question. All right, I'm sorry you guys if I got too long-winded for that, but I just felt like um, gardening is just such a huge deal for me. I, I truly think that it was life-saving in that it was it's such a wonderful escape and a wonderful hobby, and I just hope you all are getting the benefits out of it that I did. It's so wonderful just to get out into the garden and then let your brain rest as you're focusing on nature. So anyway, I'll stop with that <laughs> and I'm gonna move on to the next question. So the next question is from Anna. It's kind of a long question, so I'm not gonna read the whole thing. Um, but she says, since we Californians have been dealing with it, with, the, um, with it for more than a decade now, I'm interested to know what things you have done, especially this year to manage your water usage and help your garden through the drought. Drip irrigation is low water and very efficient and your lawn area is very small, but what else? Rainwater collection, gray water, what are the water restrictions like in Davis? Any ideas or plans to maximize water getting to your garden instead of down the drain or into the street, especially if restrictions have to tighten? So there was a lot of people interested in this question and other questions kind of similar to this. Uh, here in California, we have been dealing with drought for quite a number of years now, um, and it's becoming a big issue. And um, like you all know, we, my family and I have had dealt with the wildfires, you know, with my parents' house um, burning from the wildfire. Uh, it, you know, it, 
it hits very close to home. So dealing with the drought is definitely an issue and it's an issue for gardening and for gardeners alike. Uh, so a couple of the things that I plan on doing, and it is something that I want to um, get more into as time goes on. Um, I think irrigation is huge. Having a drip system is, is super, super important. I see quite a number of people hand watering with a hose um, their, their flowers and their plants. And I just, I think that taking the time to install a drip system and having a really good controller, I like the Ratio Smart System uh, controller, so that you can turn it off or you can shorten it or you can lengthen it, you know, you can kind of really fine tune it to exactly how much water you need. I think that that's the most um, helpful thing for gardeners and to still be able to keep water going to their garden, which, which honestly is my goal. I do see, you know, lawns that are getting watered and then have the runoff and run it in and see it running into the street. And I think that that is really, really hard. And I think that that's where restrictions need to, um, need to really tighten. And I think responsible gardeners, um, who, who really pay attention to their, their irrigation and their sprinklers and their hand watering. Um, I think that, you know, let's, let's deal with the low hanging fruit first. So, um, I would, and in response to your question, I would love to get a rain barrel. Um, I saw, uh, Garden, Keeper Ra Garden Keeper Rochelle on Instagram, and she actually lives over in Sonoma County, where I'm from, um, and she they don't get very much rain there either, and she actually spread out a tarp on her pergola and caught water through that, and she had a full barrel very, very quickly. So I think that if we start really focusing on rain collection here, even though we don't get a ton of rain, I think it can make a really, really big difference. I am not familiar with gray water, like with the laundry, um, the the laundry runoff collection, but I think that that would be something fantastic because I am a family of four and we do have a lot of laundry that we go through. So I think that something like that would be fantastic. We do have an Arboretum here in Davis, um, UC Davis Arboretum, and they are really big on native low water plants. And so I think that that is something that I will start adding into my garden, taking out plants that maybe can, that maybe are water hogs and replacing them with drought tolerant plants, as long as I enjoy the plant. You know, I'm not gonna just plant a drought tolerant, pure native garden just because I'm gonna do gardening um, for the plants I like. Like for instance, I really love the panicle hydrangeas and they do require a little bit more water, but I am very targeted and specific with how I water those plants and they're on drip irrigation. And I make sure I don't have, you know, I catch all the leaks that I do have. So, you know, there's always something that you can try and you can work on. Um, for Davis, it is a voluntary measure at this point. They're, they're urging all of us to de decrease water usage by 15%. Um, and I'm sure it will get worse as the summer goes on, especially with this year. And um, so, you know, it's just something we all have to think about here in California and probably you all in Arizona as well, um, just saving whatever water you can. So thanks for the question, Anna. All right, you guys, so next question is from Elisa. She says, hi, Janie, I'm interested in how you juggle being a mom, working and gardening, oh, and videoing it for us. I swear there isn't enough hours in the day sometimes, love your videos. Thank you, Elisa, that's very sweet of you. Um, so I don't do it all. <laughs> I don't get it all done. If you guys were to pull out a drawer or um, look at my bed right now that's not made, uh, you guys would see that it, it's just impossible to get everything done that you need to get done. But when I was reading this question and you know trying to decide how I was gonna answer it, I, I think the best thing I can say, and I say this all the time, I say it to Jason, who's sitting right behind the camera and is a known perfectionist, is perfection is the enemy of uh, progress. So I grew up in a household, my dad, <laughs> who he is a perfectionist and he liked things done a certain way. And I think that that, made me how I am today in that I am the opposite of a perfectionist. It's really important for me to get things done as quickly and as efficiently as possible. And of course, I always have trouble with that, um, you know, especially with anxiety, it can get worse and it can become um, something that you kind of focus on. When, I, when my children were very young and I had anxiety really bad, I used to spend hours, hours cleaning my house 
and not going to bed until my house was perfectly spotless. And that I just had to learn that that is, you know, that's, that's not a way to live. That doesn't mean anything if your house is clean. You need to live your life for joy. And for me, getting as much done and, all the, and fitting in all the fun things that I wanted, I wanted to do is more important than it being perfect. Um, and so that even goes for the YouTube videos in that, you know, I cannot make these videos perfect. I can't make them as perfect as I want or say the perfect thing or edit them as perfectly as I want because then I would never get a video out. Or if I did, it'd be like one video a month. So, you know, if you all look closely, you'll see mistakes in my editing or the things that I say or the things that I write or anything like that. And it, you know, it's purely just because I am I am trying not to be a perfectionist. I think it's really important not to be so hard on yourself and just to understand that there's diminishing returns. And if you try and make everything that you do in your life as perfect as possible, you're never gonna get anything done. So I don't you know, pretend to know it, that I have all the answers or I know exactly how to do it, but that is one thing that as I get older, I'm leaning into that a little bit more, that perfection is not the answer. And it's really just getting it done, being proud of what you do, and then moving on and not judging yourself for how well you did something or how clean your house is or how perfectly you said that on your YouTube channel. Um, so Elisa, that's, that's how I have to answer that question is that I am not a perfectionist. <laughs> All right, so the next question is from Jen. Jen asks, how do you plan for the upcoming growing season? How far in advance do you begin to prep for the next season? And this is another question that I kind of chuckled when I was reading it because I start planning so far in advance. I think planning is another one of my hobbies that is kind of a hard, hard thing to say is a hobby, but I love planning <laughs> and I love kind of organizing my thoughts out with to-do lists and checklists and calendars and all that kind of stuff. So that completely uh, relates to this question and how I handle that. It is something that I actually love doing. I love dreaming about my next season and how I'm going to plan it and how, what flowers I'm going to do. Um, you know, it's something that I'll even do when I'm working out in the garden, I'll be thinking, you know, in the future. And it is something that I'm trying to focus, you know, focus focusing on the present and all that kind of stuff, but it's something that it's just a place that my brain goes. So I plan by, you know, thinking what kind of um, flowers I want, what kind of color scheme I want. Um, I'll go through the season and if I come across any new flowers that I've learned, like last year I learned about heliotrope and now I have a lot of heliotrope in my garden. Um, it kind of just comes and I make notes in my gardening journal and things like that. Uh, when it comes to my cut flower garden, I actually sit down and I have a whole planning session that I do where, you know, I plan out all the flowers that I want to want to grow, uh, how long they take to uh, to germinate, how long I should grow them indoors, when I should plant them out, how long they'll take to bloom. It's like this whole thing and I love it. So um, I will link my Google Sheets document where I have that whole, where I, I planned it all on um, there so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about when I talk about planting my cut flower garden. I actually do plan pretty far in advance and that is just trial and error and finding that a lot of things sell out very, very quickly. So right now I'm actually planning for ordering my bulbs, my daffodils for um, winter, for winter plant, fall and winter planting. I'm actually feel like I need to get going, starting to think about that. And then my next thing I'm gonna start thinking about is my next year's cut flower garden and what seeds I need to, to um, order, you know, and all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, almost a year in advance, three quarters of a year in advance, Jen, it, you know, it's, I really plan it really far in advance, but that's kind of just in my nature to do that. Um, you know, I'm the kind of person who likes to plan five years in advance. So it's, you know, it's just something that, that I like doing and I, and it keeps me organized. Now I do not think you need to do that with gardening, but then if you do that, you can't be as particular about the certain varieties you want because they will sell out very, very quickly, especially now, uh, that gardening is becoming so popular. Um, I think that the supply is a lot less than it used to be and um, and things are harder to get a hold of. So Danica asks, how do you water your bougainvillea or bougainvillea in a pot? Can't 
can't seem to get the hang of them. I think I possibly overwatered slash bad drainage in the ground. My two I planted, so I'm trying again, and it's starting to look burnt. South facing sun, but it is still spring. Okay, so when I read this, I thought, Danica, your bougainvillea are probably in shock. <laughs> that was the first thing I thought. Um, it, bougainvillea are really hard to water. It's really hard to know how much to water. And, um, you know, I think that it's always better to underwater a bougainvillea than it is to overwater a bougainvillea. I did underwater my purple queen at first. Um, and as soon as I started watering it, it started flowering again. This was last year. However, I think the more important thing to remember is when you plant a bougainvillea, newly plant a bougainvillea, it's almost 100% likely going to go in transplant shock. They are so... Um, wussy <laughs> about transplanting and they can't handle it and um, a lot of people will recommend that you don't even take the nursery pot off you just cut slits in it uh, just because it cannot even handle you taking it out of the pot and gently putting it in another hole or a pot so my guess Danica when I'm reading your question is that your bougainvillea are in transplant shock and to just keep taking care of it don't get stressed about the burnt leaves you know just expect that for the season they're going to be a little bit shocked um, maybe you know, maybe since it's early in the season, maybe for a couple months and then they'll start to pull through. Um, but I think that you should just give it time. I think that you just need to give it time. Every single bougainvillea I have in my yard has gone through the same thing, transplant shock. And I thought, oh, I've killed it. And then I have to remind myself that they are such wusses. <laughs> so I hope that helps you and don't throw away those bougainvillea. I think that they will pull through. The next question is from Nepa Garden Patch or NEPA Garden Patch. And I know his name is Scott. So hi, Scott. Thank you. Um, would you consider where you live now to be your forever home? You're putting so much work in. I always wonder what people's mindset is. Being a renter, I could move at any time. So I am very hesitant to put in many large, expensive plants in. And I have to say, being a renter before this, I totally get it. I completely understand. Um, it was night and day, my mindset from when I lived in a rental home to when we bought this home, which yes, we are looking at this home as our forever home. Now I say that and things could change and you know, everything could kind of blow up and, and the whole, my five-year plan could blow up in my face. Um, but at this point for Jason and I, this is our forever home and we would like to stay here because we love it. We love the neighborhood. We love our neighbors and we love the town and I love my home. I love my garden. Um, so yeah, I do think it makes a huge difference and I wish I could say it didn't, um, but it, you know, as soon as I moved in here and I thought, oh, I'm going to be here for 20 years and I'm going to, um, you know, put these peonies in and I'm going to enjoy them for all 20 years. It just made such a difference. So one thing when I was renting, I do wish I did more container gardening because a lot of containers that I had in my rental properties, I actually took to this home and I actually did enjoy them until I made the decision to transplant it somewhere or, you know, or something like that. So if I was back in a rental home, for some reason, I would absolutely get as many containers as I possibly could and make myself a container garden. Um, I even have my micro dwarf tomatoes that I'm growing in containers and I love them. I'm having so much fun with them, you know, and, um, you know, and having said that, tomatoes and cut flowers and a lot of things are annuals. So even if you live in a rental home and you plant annuals or you plant um, cut flowers or you plant vegetables, it's one season. Um, but I think for the landscaping and for the really expensive plants, that's a hard one. Uh, I don't, I don't think I could wrap my brain around that if I was a renter. Um, it, it would, it would be a tough one for me. Jason and I, before we started traveling for physical therapy, we did actually own one other home in Novato, California, which is about 30 minutes north of San Francisco. And um, when we decided to travel, we decided to rent that home out. We decided to keep it and rent it out. And we had renters in there and they, that said, oh, we love this home. We want to stay here forever. Can I plant my roses in the backyard? Of course you can. You know, she planted all her roses and then, you know, the situation changed and Jason and I had to sell that home. And so we felt horrible. We felt so bad telling our renters that they had to 
dig up their roses and move. I felt so horrible for her. Luckily it was roses so she could transplant those pretty easily, um, but she was heartbroken and I was heartbroken for having to tell her that. Um, so I do, I do think container gardening is wonderful and I think it can help and I think it can, can, can get you going, um, but at least in my situation, my love for gardening just exploded once I got my forever home. Um, so yeah, so that, thank you for the question, Scott. I appreciate it. All right, so next question is from Lucky Alfie. She says, I too garden in 9B, not too far from you. I struggle, I struggle with zone NB. So many plants are zone eight and lower. I sneak in a few in cool parts of my garden with mixed success. Do you suffer from zone NB? And if so, what do you wish you could grow and what plants have you had success pushing the zone? Um, so I really like this question because I often push the zones and I do have zone envy. I have a ton of zone envy. Um, probably my biggest zone envy are all the hydrangeas. When I see pictures of people back east or in the Midwest and they have those hedges of hydrangeas, you know, the big mop head hydrangeas. I would love to have that in my garden. I had hydrangeas as my wedding flowers, so hydrangeas are super important to me, specifically white hydrangeas, which is why I have my limelights, panicle hydrangeas, and those I have gotten to grow with a little bit of care, a little bit of extra water, um, but I would love to have the other kind and, and kind of let them thrive. Um, I also would absolutely love um, like elderberry berries or um, basically any type of berry uh, berry shrubs we we really have trouble with those we don't have a lot of those or at least the pretty ones um, and let me think what else um, I don't know I tend to push it I have my Wichita blue juniper which is only to a zone seven and I have that growing <laughs> here and I'm in zone nine so if I really 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 want a plant and I have zone envy I will kind of just grab I will kind of grab it and I'll see what I can do um, but I would say my biggest zone envy is all the hydrangeas I think I would have my garden absolutely full of hydrangeas if I lived in a cooler zone next question is from Lou she says I would love to try gardening, but most plants end up dying in my care. I'm sorry, Lou. What are your thoughts about stones or rocks as ground cover? We currently have mulch, but thinking of replacing them with rocks as weeds are just sprouting everywhere. However, if I do that, would it be hard to till the garden with rocks on top? All right, Lou. So we moved into this house and we had rocks as ground cover everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. And we spent a ton of time and manpower getting the rocks out because I hated it. And the reason why I hated it is because it just made the garden feel very um, harsh and um, like sharp edges and just not welcoming at all. Especially when it's really hot here, the last thing you want is more heat radiating off, radiating off all the rocks. So my preference always is going to be mulch and I'm willing to deal with the weeds. Um, you can always do landscape fabric, even though that's not, you know, that's not wonderful. It doesn't do a fantastic job. I think having a nice, thick layer of mulch is probably the best thing. Like do it thicker than you think, you know, do a couple inches of it and then that should keep out a lot of the weeds. But you know, you still, you are gonna have weeds. However, in my yard with the rocks, some of the landscape fabric had started ripping and I had weeds coming through my rocks. Even on the side yard, I had tons of weeds coming through the rocks and then I realized that they didn't put landscape fa fabric over in my side yard underneath the rocks. So really the rocks don't, don't limit the weeds that much either. Um, I also did have a lot of trouble planting anything uh, because it was a pain to kind of scrape away all the rocks and move everything around and get the plants into where I wanted them where I wanted them there. Um, so yeah, so I'm not a fan of rocks as landscape mulch, probably just because of the heat that I live in. I've seen areas where it's very pretty. Actually, my neighbor down the street, she has really pretty landscape rocks, um, but I just didn't like it in my backyard and I really like the black mulch uh, look as well. But you know, totally your own opinion. Everybody has their differences in what they like in a garden and I think do what is the best for you but I think that you should be aware that rock, even weeds will even come up through rocks unless you have a huge thick layer of rocks as well. All right so thanks for the question Lou and good luck.
All right, and the next question is from another Lou. Uh, she says, I was wondering if money was no object, what would be your dream garden? An example is how Laura was always dreaming of having a Hartley. And she's talking about Laura from Garden Answer, the, her YouTube channel, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. So Lou, fantastic question. Thank you for allowing me to dream. I've just, you know, been thinking about this, like, gosh, what would I do? Um, last weekend, we uh, we have a art gallery here in Davis called the Pence Gallery, and they had a garden tour. Um, they have a garden tour every single year where you can go to about five different homes and tour their garden. And so, of course, my family and I went on that garden tour, and we had a lovely time, and it was wonderful seeing all the gardens and seeing what grows you know, in our own town, seeing what flowers grow. Um, one of them was uh, Jupiter's beard. They had, or red valerian. Oh my gosh, it was all over these gardens and it was gorgeous and I am putting it in my garden. Um, so anyway, uh, if money was no object, one of those gardens was absolutely gorgeous. And I think the reason why it was so gorgeous is it was, I mean, it was just, it was the garden that I would love to have. And it was basically, there was a spot for everything that the gardener wanted. There was a greenhouse, not too big, about the size of mine. And then there was a spot for the vegetable garden. And it was like one of those beautiful potager, um, you know, gardens that were centered around a center to tour that had raspberries growing in it. Um, and then there was, you know, a section for the cut flowers that was absolutely beautiful. Basically everything had its space. It even had a kind of this little field where there was just all these like native wildflowers growing and a little path all the way through. It was so, so beautiful, probably so out of reach, um, but you know, it's fun to dream. Um, one thing that I will say um, even if money was no object, I think I would still want a garden where I didn't have to have any help. Um, and that's simply because I don't want to have to tell anybody what to do. Um, I just, I want to be able to do it myself. I don't, I don't think I would want to hire anybody in. Um, you know, I think that I would want to keep it small enough so that I could still manage it myself. And so, you know, whatever we end up doing, if this ends up not being our forever home or anything like that, I think that I, it would be really important for me to continue taking care of the garden myself because the garden is like, you know, like I was saying to you guys, it's my place for peace it's my place to deal with anxiety and stress you know and um, if I'm having a bad day the garden will immediately help alleviate that and that's because I can come out in the garden and I can work by myself and be in my own thoughts so if I had a garden that was so big that I needed some help with it um, I wouldn't I would miss out on all of that and you know the whole point of gardening and the reason why I love gardening would be gone um, so you know that's something that I was thinking of of you know would I ever want a, a giant garden where I where I had people coming in and helping me and I love I you know gorgeous, beautiful, but I just don't think it's right for me. I think that my dream garden would still be small enough where I can manage it myself, but I would like to have um, more space for the things that I love, like more, the cut flower garden and a vegetable garden, you know, and all that kind of stuff. I feel like I'm doing a pretty good job fitting everything in into our very small um, piece of property that we have here. Um, and it's kind of fun to kind of squeeze everything in and see what I can fit in. Um, if I could just kind of stretch the fence line out a little bit it'd be great um you know but it, but it is what it is all right so that is it for my first ever question and answer video again i want to thank all of you so much for watching this for supporting me for submitting your questions you all are so wonderful and i am a lucky girl to have all of you as viewers so i hope you all enjoyed this if you did please consider subscribing and i hope you all have a chance to get into your garden today